Hello students, continuing with the lectures in which we were discussing the kind of models that we have, we will continue with the probabilistic models. Now whenever we capture data, it has some uncertainty associated with it. Now suppose I am an online gaming platform and I have a lot of people who play my games. So whenever there is a match between two people online, then what I try to do is I try to connect people by assessing their game skills and if they match, I try and make them play together. So here whenever I am catching data, I am trying to assess their game skills, there is some amount of uncertainty involved here. Similarly, if you see Netflix or any other OTT apps, they suggest you movies to see next. So essentially, they are associating a probability of each and every movie that they have on their platform with the probability of you watching that movie. And according to the highest probability, they suggest you a movie. Similarly, the weather app, it tells you what will be the weather tomorrow. It is assessing based on the factors known to it as, uh, as far as the environmental parameters go on. So wherever there is data, there is some amount of uncertainty involved. And machine learning models are probabilistic in the respect that they allocate probability to projections in a controlled learning setting and they generate data distributions in latent space representation. So let's understand the meaning of this definition. Now we are allocating probability to projections in a controlled learning setting. So let's take an example of Netflix. This is a controlled learning setting of the app and it is making projections of each and every movie that it has on its platform to be played by you. So it is allocating a probability to projections in that particular environment. And then it generates a data distribution in latent space. So latent space is a representation of a compact data, a compressed data of all the kind of data available with me. So Netflix may have millions of movies. It will try to generate a data distribution as per the preference of the user. So you can see it here. So suppose I have lots and lots of movies here on my platform. Now these are the green ones which I will probably see and the red ones which I will not see. Now based on my choices of the movies that I see, so maybe I and I was suggested some movies and I did not see them. Based on this, it starts segregating these movies and it starts associating a probability of the movie being seen. So these have a high probability of being seen. These have a high probability of being rejected. And similarly, it is now showing me a data distribution in this representation. So this is what a probabilistic model is. So there are three key ideas behind these models. So there is a probability to quantify uncertainty. So we are definitely we are assuming that we can quantify any uncertainty by a probability. If an event is least is not probable, the probability is zero. If you are definite about an event happening, it is one, and all the probabilities will lie between zero and one. Then we have graphs to express these models. So I am able to use graphs. I am able to use certain kind of visualization techniques to be able to express my model that I am making. And there is an efficient inference to make predictions. So out of this, I am able to make an inference to be able to give predictions for whatever I am. So there are two things here. You have probabilistic models and you have deterministic models. So coming to the difference between them, a deterministic model's output is totally specified by its system parameters and starting values. So suppose I am talking about a relation between miles and kilometers. I know the conversion and it will never change. So it is specified by the system parameters. There is an absolute relationship defined. And whatever values that I have will determine this model. The probabilistic or stochastic models incorporate randomness into each approach. So here we have some randomness associated. Then the other difference is the identical set of parameter values and beginning circumstances will result in the same result. So if I have a deterministic model and I start with certain values, I will always get the same result. As many times I go through that model, I will always get the same result because it is defined by a clear equation something like this yi is equal to a plus bxi so wherever i have xi defined and a, I, a and b are fixed i will end up with the same yi here the identical set of parameter values in the beginning circumstances will result in a variety of results so i have another value ei associated maybe i start with the same xi but this due to this ei my yi will change every time i run this uh, probabilistic model so you can see here, even with Netflix, it may suggest me one movie one time or the other movie. If I do the same, I do not see the movie, but next time it makes another suggestion. So every time it iterates, it will give me a different output. 
example weather prediction because it is dependent on so many variables that it will never give me the same result every time I run this model. So what is the benefit of probabilistic modeling? In reality, it is a fantastic tool for exploratory decision making. Now wherever there is exploratory decision making, it is basically you are trying to explore a new area. So you get the data, you clean and manipulate the data, then you do the exploratory analysis by visualization techniques. So a probabilistic model is kind of no more close to our natural organization. Now probabilistic models see features and target variables as random variables. So when they are modeling, they assume that the xi and the y, so my target variable is the y and my features are the xy values, they are all assumed to be random variables. The process of modeling represents and manipulates the level of uncertainty with respect to these variables, just like we talked here. And there are two kinds of probabilistic models that we have, predictive and generative. So in predictive probability models, we use the idea of conditional probability. So here we say that P, that is the probability of Y given X. So we know that the probability of Y can be predicted from X. We will see an example of this to be able to understand better, though this is all based on the class 10 mathematics that you already done. And a generative model estimates the joint probability distribution P, Y, X. So once we know the joint distribution for the generative model, we can derive any conditional or marginal distribution involving the same variables. We will talk about all these models specifically when we land with the lectures of generative models. And uh, there is an example of navy bias which is based on probabilistic classifier. So just to reiterate, probability is what? Probability is the measure of how likely something will occur. So suppose I have a dice, so I know it has 6 outcomes, 1 to 6 numbers and for each and every outcome, I have the probability associated with the outcome as 1 by 6. Similarly, for an unbiased coin, I will have two pro outcomes, a head or a tail and the probability of both will be 1 by 2. Uh, similarly, if I, I, I can talk about getting even numbers, so the number of instances desired upon the total number of instances possible, so I, ha I can have 6 outcomes out of which 2, 4 and 6 are even, so I will have 3 by 6, that is my half probability of getting an even number. Now talking about the probability distribution, so it assigns the possibility to each measurable subset of a possible outcome of a random experiment. Suppose I do an experiment of a single toss of a coin, I know there are just two outcomes that can have head or tail and the probability associated with each one of them is 0.5. So this is my probability distribution. For two tosses, I can have two kind of values here, 2 to the power 2. So four values, head, head, tail, tail, head and tail, tail and head. So that's my first coin, that's my second coin outcome and these are the possible four outcomes I have and the possibility is 0.25 of each. So because it will multiply by 0.5 into 0.5, 0.5 into 0.5. So this is the probability distribution of two tosses. So here in probability distribution, what do we do? Whatever the possible outcomes I have, I write them down and then I write down the associated probability with each and every outcome. Now there are certain rules, the list must be disjoint. Each probability like always is between 0 and 1 and if I add up all the probabilities it should be 1 because something or the other has to happen. So the probability of all the events happening is always 1. Now the backbone behind this entire Bayes theorem is, so there is this rule here, probability of A given B. So it simply says probability of occurrence of A and B both divided by the probability of B. And in case I have independent events, independent events means that the probability of A and B occurring is independent to each other. So you can stick to examples like suppose I say you toss two coins. So these are independent events because the probability of getting a head or a tail on one coin will not affect the probability of what I get on the other coin. So these are independent events. So that is why you will say probability of A and B is actually probability of A into B. But when you have dependent events, so suppose I am taking out colored balls experiment that you have studied in class 10th where you have a number of colored balls, so the first ball that I take out is red, then what is the probability that the second ball that I take out is red? So uh, because you have decreased the number of red balls here, these two events are not independent. So that is why this is the theorem used to calculate such probabilities. Now suppose I come to a problem where I am trying to classify an email as a spam or a ham. So my y is the output of a class, spam ham. And my x is basically the presence of certain words. So maybe there are uh, words like lottery, prize, 
or claim they could be different words but i am talking about just maybe these two words and if either one is present it's a spam if one of them is present then also it's a spam if neither one is present it's a ham so here the probability of we are trying to assess the probability of getting a spam or a ham depending on the x output so here you say that the steerer probability of y given features x has values assigned to it so suppose my x has assigned values lottery is absent prize is present what is the probability that y is actually a ham or a spam so it may be giving me a high probability here because prize is present so this is the basic predictive probability model that we make and when we come specifically to the lecture of navy bias i'll be able to explain it much better as to how we calculate it mathematically so just to refresh the concept of bayes theorem let's took, uh, take an example here so suppose i have teachers and students so i have 20 teachers present and 80 students present out of which this distribution is given for the males and females so total i have 40 females and 60 males and this is the distribution here now suppose i'm trying to find out what is the conditional probability that a certain member of the school is a teacher given that he is a man so i'm trying to find out the probability of a teacher given that he is a male this is what i'm trying to find out so using the bayes theorem it will be probability of teacher intersection male so probability that the person that i'm talking about is both a teacher and a male divided by the probability of male so teacher and male how many male teachers do i have i have 12 male teachers here out of 100 so 12 would be out of 100 would be the probability of this how many males do we have so we have total 60 males so the probability of getting a male is 60 upon 100 so that would be 60 upon 100 so ultimately my probability would be 12 upon 60 which is 0.2 so this is how you use the bayes theorem so let's look at the probability bayes rule now so probability of x given y is equal to probability of x intersection y upon probability of y that's one part and similarly i could have probability of y given x is equal to probability of x intersection y upon probability of x now this is known to me because i have certain examples so let's look at this example here suppose i have a table here which has x1 x2 x3 x4 and this is my y so all these values are known to me i know that if it is sunny the temperature is hot the humidity is high the wind is not present i will not play so this is what i'm trying to determine with whatever conditions new conditions given to me i may have some values given here which are not present here a combination of such an outlook temperature humidity windy here so that i'm trying to find out whether i'll go out to play or not given this table so here what do i have i have the probability of x given y i have that and i'm trying to find out the probability of some y given x condition so the x conditions are given to me some x combination x1 x2 x3 x4 some combination of this x1 intersection x2 intersection x3 intersection x4 is my new x here and i'm trying to find out the probability of that event y so i can use this equation now substituting p of a x intersection y here you can see that this is equal to this px given y into py i will just simply substitute this divide by px and i'll be able to find out this new probability so this is known to me probability of y can be calculated probability of x can be calculated and i'll have a new probability given to me so this is how the bayes rule works i will talk about this in much detail when it comes to the specific class of this So this is the idea behind probabilistic models I will discuss more in the next class thank you